Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome to your general reading. This is the Dream Clairvoyant. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope you're doing well, feeling safe and feeling blessed because you are. So for the channeled message reading, it does not matter what your zodiac sign is or what your gender is. Absolutely anyone may resonate with this message. I just ask that you use discernment always in order to take what resonates and leave what does not. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Holy Spirit, thank you for guiding us. What is the message for someone out there? What is the message for someone out there? What is the message for someone out there? All right, 13, a child. Hmm, number seven, the snake card. Clarify 13, child. Clarify 13, child. Clarify 13, child. You have 26, the knowledge card. Then let's look at number seven. Clarify seven, snake. Clarify seven, snake. Okay, so both gentlemen cards came out. The, in the, the Gilded Reverie deck, um, there are two gentlemen cards and two lady cards but they're different like gentleman number one is depicted with the rose in his hands okay and um he appears to be a lot more uh, kind <laughs> maybe even romantic loving with the, you know, rose in his hands. And gentleman number two is depicted to be a lot more passionate, fierce. They're different. Um, and we're going to see what's going on here. Because child, then the book, the book is all about knowledge. Hmm. Okay. Tell us more about this message. Fourteen. Fourteen is the fox. Fourteen is the fox, which is all about trickery and deceit. The fox is a trickster. Then we have 41, which is the well, it tells us to look closer at what we're looking at. Let me see here, 41. I'm referring to the Kipper booklet. It says, I have many symbolic meanings, wishes, resources, creativity, and healing. If you look intently into the depth of my darkness, you may see your true thoughts reflected and your secret wishes revealed. But your wish will only be granted if you dig deep and work hard. The well card is about looking deeper into an issue. The whole car has also had to do with wishes, but it, it comes with a warning. Be careful what you wish for. Yeah, there's... Um, tell us about uh, gentleman number one and two. I think I know what's going on here. Tell us about gentleman one and two. Yeah, it's like someone has... An, so 22 is all about... Um, a choice, a decision. You have two paths to take, uh, two stairway, okay, to take. There's no right or wrong. There's no right or wrong way, but you can only take one path. Just know that that's true. In life, we have various paths that we can take, but each path will lead us to different outcomes. So at the end of the day. There is a right path that will lead you to a good outcome, but God grants all of us free will. So he's not going to tell you what path to take. He will guide you. He will reveal things to you. But ultimately, the choice is ours. Um, it could be that someone has two prominent soulmates who are drastically different. Um, and then there's some trickery. There's some confusion with this because... 
41 is the well card and wells are all about wishes. Be careful what you wish for, perhaps. I wonder if somebody um, wished for a soulmate who may, you know, they ended up meeting this soulmate, but maybe the soulmate isn't who they thought they would be. There's something, um, tell us about this, the, the two gentlemen's here. Holy Spirit. One of them could be a bit troublesome. Yeah, one of them is, is a bit shady. One of them is shady. One of them um, has a darker energy. Doesn't mean that they're evil or wicked, you know, but I feel like one of them is much more humanistic as in one of them may just be very determined to get what he wants maybe a bit selfish maybe like so passionate that he doesn't mind stepping on other people's toes he doesn't mind lying you know cheating and manipulating to get what he wants these two men are drastically different if this is your message they are representing your lover you have two prominent soulmates but they're different I feel one is much more calm and peaceful and loving. Um, and the other is much more passionate and fierce and determined. Um, I feel like gentleman number two is a bit troublesome. He's showing up as the fox card. He likes trickery. That's how he gets what he wants. He's a, this is like a bad boy versus good boy. <laughs> you know, none of, none of these soulmates are bad or, or evil or wicked, but one is definitely more humanistic as in the things that he does is purely human nature. He may even get jealous and malicious, you know, he doesn't really discipline or, you know, like how some of us are very spiritually disciplined, where we know how to put aside those humanistic feelings so that we can honor God and do the right thing. Um, but not everybody has that kind of discipline. He's showing up as number six. And number six is the, uh, the cloud card, which is all about fog. It's all about a lack of clarity. He's deceitful in getting what he wants. Okay, um, and I feel like the well card is saying, double check, is this really who you want? Look a bit closer, examine this person a bit more and ask yourself, is this really what you want in a partner? I'm sure this person could be attractive, fierce, you know, passionate, fun, exciting, sexy, look at him with the chest out, you know, but is he who you want? It could even be that, the, that you have two men pursuing you. It could be. Let's look at gentleman number one, depicted with the rose in his hands, 28. Tell us about gentleman number one. The dice card almost came out, which is all about a chance, a risk. 28, he wants you, yeah. There are two men here. I feel they're both pursuing you. Um, 16 is the star card, it's wish fulfillment. Okay, you are his wish fulfillment. And then look at how beautiful number 20 is the social, it's the park card, which is all about the public and social places. Um, it could be that that is where you guys met. Maybe you met in a very earthy place, like maybe where there's a lot of trees, plants, beautiful plants we see in here. Maybe you, you met at an outing. Um, there could be beautiful statues, okay? There could be a fountain where the two of you met. It's beautiful. But gentleman number one, tell us about gentleman number one, is a lot more grounded, the tree card. 
Okay. Um, tell us about gentleman number one. 11. He's showing up as the broom and whip. And then 21. Let me make sure I'm picking up on the right one. Kind of feels like gentleman number two wants to come in. He's protecting you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Gentleman number one is protecting you from gentleman number two. You have two men pursuing you. You might know about the both of them, or maybe you only know about one of them, but they're pursuing you at the same time. For many of you, you know about gentleman two, but maybe you don't know about gentleman one. Gentleman two would be much more expressive, maybe even a bit obnoxious. Um, I can imagine gentleman two to be very outgoing, maybe even, a you know, like he wants attention. So I can assume that he was very straightforward and direct that he wants you. Whereas gentleman number one would probably kind of watch you from a distance in a, in a loving and caring way and be very careful with how he pursues you. Gentleman number one thinks about you far more uh, he thinks he prioritizes your feelings and emotions, what you want. Whereas gentleman number two is all about what he wants. He's a go-getter type. Different flavor, different flavor of men here. But just know, you know, each path, there's two paths. You can go with gentleman number one or you can go with gentleman number two. But each path leads us to a different outcome. Like if you go left, the outcome is going to be different from if you go right. That's what you call options. If they both lead you to the same outcome, then there's no point in having two different paths. Something's going on with gentleman one here. Where he feels like he needs to protect you from gentleman two. I feel, I feel conflict brewing over you. Because uh, it's like he's shielding you, okay? And it's for your security, 35. Security and stability. He's securing you. Uh, 11 is the broom and whip card. 21 is the mountain card, which represents obstacles, blockages. 11 is the broom and whip card, which represents strife, conflict. There's something that he's doing here, and I want you to understand what he's doing so that you won't misunderstand him and get upset, but it's to protect you. It's for your security. The world card is here. He is, it's like he's putting a gate around you. And it's not to control you, but it's because he feels like there's someone who wants to invade you. That's what he's doing. It's like he's drawing a line around you and he's telling people, do not overstep this line. It's like you're here and he draws a line around you and... He's making it clear to people, keep your distance from her. But it's only because, again, I, I just heard siren and then I heard alarm. Raise an alarm. Something has happened that has raised an alarm and he is concerned about your security. He feels like you have been invaded. Six of Cups. He feels like you have been invaded. Six of Cups, Four of Swords, and the Five of Swords. And indeed, you have. You have. Um, the Five of Swords is unresolved conflict. You, For some of you, maybe you ended things with gentleman number two. 
okay? And, and look at this, Four of Swords is like nervousness and anxieties. Do you feel like he's going to come back? For those of you who have left gentleman number two, you might be a bit fearful of this person or paranoid of this person where you feel like he's going to come back. Let me see here. Tell us more about the situation. The world six of cups. What is gentleman number one doing? Gentleman number one, what is he doing here? Gentleman number one, what is he doing when it comes to gentleman number two? Three of swords, a separation, and six of wands. Okay. Gentleman number two is making it very clear that he is upset that the two of you have separated. Look, judgment. He is calling attention to perhaps a breakup that happened between the two of you, a separation that happened between the two of you. Um, you guys could have been, yeah, you guys were together, the Four of Wands, even if it wasn't an actual commitment, because Four of Wands is my commitment card. It could have been a spiritual commitment. Okay, there was a relationship here with or without the title, the two of you were together. And the two, three of cups. Uh oh, hope this is not what I think it is. What's this three of cups? Hope this is not what I think it is. Let me see, Three of Cups. Ooh, I almost dropped it. Here for the Three of Cups. Knight of Cups. You guys were together. Four of Wands, Three of Cups is here, Knight of Cups is here. You guys were together. You guys had a thing, okay? And what is gentleman number two trying to do? Because it's, it's making gentleman one feel very defensive, like he has to guard you. Something's going on here, Holy Spirit. Please reveal it to us. Yeah, like gentleman one is thinking, okay, this person is trying to bother you or invade you. The strength is overcoming difficulties. Gentleman one feels like he has to protect you and stand by your side because there's something about gentleman number two that may be very forceful, pushy. Nine of pentacles. And the Empress. There's something Gentleman 2 is trying to do to you. Nine of Pentacles, the Empress. These are both energies of the, the Empress. Even the Nine of Pentacles is like a pre-Empress sort of energy. Um, okay. Gentleman number one feels like the feminine here needs help. Or that he 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 feels like this moral obligation to protect her because she's all by herself. Like the Nine of Pentacles are people who are very independent, self-sufficient, well accomplished, but they don't have a partner. This is a feminine who's in that pre-empress energy. When she dates, when she gets, when she finds a partner, she's gonna become the empress, and her partner's gonna be the emperor. But Nine of Pentacles is like your pre-empress. She's only missing one more pentacle to have all 10 pentacles. 
And that's when she can step into the Empress energy. But for now, I see this as a woman who is single, independent, and self-sufficient. Very well accomplished with all of these pentacles around her. But she does not have a partner, which is why gentleman number one is like, I have to step in and help. The Eight of Cups. Queen of Wands in the reverse. She has left. Yeah, there was a separation. She has left him or she will be leaving him. Eight of Cups, Queen of Wands in the reverse. And I'm pretty sure gentleman number two would be like a King of Wands type. But she's in the Queen of Wands in the reverse. Uh, she is removing herself from that role that she was playing as his partner. And he is distraught. Nine of Swords, he's distraught. And I feel like when he is upset, the whole world knows. Yep, judgment, everybody knows. See how these people are like clapping? He's calling attention to this. I feel like this was, this was a man who she thought was the one or could be the one. But there's something about his behavior that I feel is the reason why she is separating from him. He, <clears throat> excuse me, he has a pattern of being deceitful in getting what he wants. And all of this attention with the judgment that he's calling onto this, this man is not quietly heartbreaking, heartbroken. He's being loud. He's calling attention to it. With the two of wands, it's getting people's attention. Two of wands, three of wands. Two of wands is carrying out a plan. Three of wands is, let me see here. Could represent waiting. Could also represent teamwork, Ace of Swords. <sighs> He's waiting for something. Ace of Swords is communication. It could be that he's watching her to see what she's going to do. Like when you move, I move. And there's like page of cups. There's no, he looks at this woman as his sweetheart. He looks at this woman as his sweetheart. He's watching her to see what her next moves are. When you move, I move. That's what he's trying to do. It looks like she's waiting on something, maybe waiting on communication, waiting on clarity to see how she can move forward. And he's watching her as well. Everybody's watching everyone here. He is watching her. Eight of Swords. He doesn't know what to do with the Eight of Swords. He doesn't know what to do. He's, in, he's stuck in his head. He's in this mental prison. He doesn't know what to do. He keeps on seeing her as the Page of Cups. Okay? It's like from his perspective, he sees her as someone who needs to be loved and protected and he feels like he can do that but the way he does it is a bit too much that passion can sometimes be a bit overbearing
I do feel like he loves her, but it's toxic. That's how it feels. As for gentleman number one, what can we know about gentleman number one? As for gentleman number one, look at this, the moon. Queen of the King of Wands. Look, gentleman number one, <laughs> there's something you gotta know about him, okay? He's not scary at first impression, but he can get down and dirty if he needs to. Gentleman number one, he gives me the energy of someone who could be earth and fire. There's like his birth chart. Something about it, it's like he has the right combination of earth and fire, he, so which is really good. I feel like that's why you would like him more, where there's a time and place for everything. He knows when to be calm, when to be mature, you know, when to choose peace, but he also knows when to choose violence and when to fight. He's like the perfect combination of both. Whereas gentleman number two He's just straight fire. There's no control. There's no, there's no discipline there, which is why he tends to be out of control. I am very surprised to see that gentleman number one is in the energy of the king of wands. This is a king of, I feel like this man is like a king of wands and king of pentacles type. He's ready, like he's on guard. See how he's sitting up like this? He's not even leaning back on his throne. His fist is bald. He looks like he's about to get up. He's on guard. He's sitting in the moon energy where he's like, yeah, we can get dirty. His dark energy is coming out. His dark energy is, look, seven of wands. He's like, I'm, he's like, we're going to fight. The seven of wands is like, Stand your ground, defend yourself. That's what he's doing. He's not afraid to get his hands dirty, but there's a time and place for everything. You know, there's a time and place for everything. He's doing this for the right reason. He's doing it for love. He's doing it in the name of love with the King of Cups. I think he knows that there is a woman here who's trying to get away from a toxic lover who is gentleman number two. And gentleman number one is willing to back her up, protect her and defend her and make sure that she leaves successfully because she's trying to leave if she hasn't already, she's trying to leave gentleman number two. And let me tell you, he is just like, it's a big pity party with that judgment He's calling attention to the breakup. He's making a really big deal about it. And next thing you know, he's going to be throwing a fit about it. And gentleman number one is like, hey, I can be a king of wands or a king of cups. <laughs> you just let me know. We can handle this with peace or we can go to war. Wow. Gentleman number one. What else can we know about gentleman number one? He seems to know what's going on. He's showing up as the eight of pentacles and the sun. And the sun. Eight of pentacles is someone who works very hard, but I also see self-improvements that he has made. Oh, you know what Spirit just showed me? Gentleman number one used to be a gentleman number two. He used to be a bad boy. He used to be more so in his dark energy until he did the work on himself. And now he's more so in his light energy. And we all have both. We all have darkness and light within us. It's just the more spiritually evolved you are, you choose the light. You make good decisions. We all have choices. 
can we can be bad or good. That's that's what free will is. Um, we all have the ability to be in our shadow side, you know, where we are living life selfishly. Okay, but we all have the ability to be in our light side. And the light side is where we make good decisions, where there's honesty, transparency, integrity, morals, principles. Um, gentleman number one used to be a gentleman number two. That's why I kept on feeling like, whoa, 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 this is a man who, like, you know, I see that he's very well balanced. Okay. When it comes to his shadow side and his light side, he's very balanced. He knows he can tap into both, depending on the circumstances. Um, I see with the Eight of Pentacles, he did much work, self-improvement, much work on himself, which is why he is showing up as the sun, which is light. The sun represents light. It's the purest form of love. It's honesty. It's transparency. It's healing. It's growth, it's prosperity, it's expansion, it's fertility. He's calm for the majority of the time, but he also brings the flame when necessary. Okay? when necessary whereas gentleman number two is more so of like a tyrant more so of a tyrant where he wants control uh, he may even like using fear to control people at all times he doesn't compromise so Wow. Yeah. Gentleman number gentleman number one is a king of wands, king of pentacles type. He is doing this all in the name of love. Like king of cups is very compassionate, very righteous. They strive to do what is right by others. And I feel like he knows. I'm like, how does he know? Unless she, I don't know what this ace of cups, he, he, he knows because he's seeing her as his love interest with the Ace of Cups. You know, and men can tell when another man is after a woman. Like, how does he know? He knows. The Fool, the, the Page of Pentacles, he's looking at her as his new beginning in love. Ace of Cups, the Fool, and the Page of Pentacles, someone who he can commit to. Page of Pentacles is, a, is an offer of a commitment. And he knows that she must be leaving someone from the past. You know, a woman this beautiful who's showing up in that Queen of Wands energy. Four of Cups, Temperance, Four of Pentacles. She knows, he knows, he knows that she has rejected someone from the past. Four of Cups is rejection. She's sitting here in the Temperance peace and harmony from within. She's sitting in the four of pentacles. She's guarded. She's protecting herself. Wow. What else can we know here about this, this situation? What else can we know about this? Page of wands. The love is going to be so intense. Oh my gosh. I know that she has had a taste of gentleman number two, you know, looking all hot and passionate with his chest out. But gentleman number one has that passion and sensual. Like he, he's very sensual as well. Very romantic. It's like the right combination He's like gentleman number two plus more. 
when you get a when she gets a taste of gentleman one she's going to be hooked it's a really really sweet and passionate kind of love And I feel like she's going to be extremely attracted to him. Knight of Wands, the Lovers, the Page of Wands. She's going to like what she sees. I see. She's going to like it. The Page of Swords and the Star. Yeah. She's going to see him as her new wish fulfillment. Now, I do wonder, though, why, sh why the child card showed up. I do wonder. It could be the child card could represent someone who is young or youthful, inexperienced, innocent, could represent naivety. It could just be talking about her youthfulness and her innocence. She has two lovers. Look at the look at the two of pentacles juggling. She has two lovers. She may even be very imaginative. She did show up as a page of cups. So those are like, the page of cups is like your theater art sort of people, okay? They are natural lovers. They wear their heart on their sleeve. They're, they're artistic, imaginative. They fantasize. There is this innocence and charm that she carries. And I feel like that's what, that's what gets people hooked on her. Okay, um, these are the sorts of people where you hang around them and you forget all about your worries. She's this is somebody who is very charming and childlike, but in an innocent, pure hearted, you know, kind of way. Um, but you know what's interesting about her when I clarified the child, she showed up as the book card. There's not someone who's naive. This is not someone who is inexperienced. The, this is the book of knowledge. 26. <clears throat> this could be someone who's very wise for her age. Or who appears a lot more youthful than her age. There's something here. 26 book. Yeah, the book of knowledge, the book of secrets, what I house is educational and private. Um, the book draws attention to the power of knowledge and the importance of possessing it. This is someone who I feel is very clever, very wise, and very knowledgeable. Extremely experienced, but they are very youthful. I'm trying to see who I can, who I can compare uh, or use as an example. This woman, she reminds me of, and I know this celebrity can be controversial, um, but she reminds me of Marilyn Monroe. And I don't know much about Marilyn Monroe. I really don't. But... I've heard a whole lot about her, and I know there's controversy surrounding her name, um, but I've seen some clips of her, like in interviews, and she's very alluring. Despite the controversy, um, she had the men in, in complete awe. I mean, she, just stunning, a classic beauty. If Marilyn was alive now, right now, she would still be considered beautiful. She had that classic beauty that, that what do they call it, a timeless beauty. And as much as in her movie roles, because you know, back then there was a lot of misogyny, back then, because she was so good looking, they would put her in movie roles where she was like the ditzy blonde. 
But if you watch that woman's interviews, she is, she was an intellectual. She was far more intelligent than people knew, but it's because her beauty, she was so stunning that the first thing people would notice isn't her intelligence or her wisdom, it's her beauty. And in interviews that I've watched of her, she's so charming. When she talks from her, her voice, her facial expressions, very, very charming and very innocent-like, youthful. And that's what made her so mesmerizing. And I think that's what happened to gentleman number two. He thinks he's mesmerizing. I feel like he got mesmerized by her. He is completely... Um, he is completely captivated by her, completely. He's enamored, so much to the point where I feel like it's one of the reasons why he, he misbehaves. There's a strong, passionate attraction that he has to her. Very, very strong attraction. And I, I feel like she's so captivating that sometimes he, he just loses control. And sometimes he has a hard time looking at her as a person. He looks at her as this beautiful, you know, woman that he must have as like a prized possession. And he forgets that she is a person. She is a human being who has free will, who is intelligent. There's more to her. He forgets that there's more to her than her beauty. Whereas, and, and he loses control. That is why he acts the way that he does. Whereas I feel like gentleman one, you know, he would absolutely acknowledge that she's beautiful, but he would be the type of man to say, I want to get to know that beautiful woman. I want to study and learn that beautiful woman. I want to learn about her. Whereas gentleman number two would be like, I want to conquer her. <laughs> I want to, you know, I want to have her. I want to conquer her. I want her as mine. So very interesting. She's the child card but she comes out as the book, the knowledge, the wisdom. Hmm. These kind of women can make a man go crazy. I'm telling you, it's that natural charm there. Uh, beauty is a blessing. She should know that, acknowledge that. Her beauty is her power, but she has to know how to use it. Um, and the right people to be around who will respect her um, as a person. Because I see, ooh, this woman, this woman, I'm telling you, she has that Marilyn Monroe effect. Um, it's, it's, it's the kind of charm and beauty that doesn't come from what she does, but it's her aura. It's the energy that she carries, and it's very natural. These are the sort of women where they could be wearing pajamas, house clothes, and they would still look very attractive. They would still be an eye catcher. Um, and I find that women who are like this, it comes from the kindness of their heart. They tend to carry a very... Um, pure, a very pure um, heart. And it just exudes from their energy. You can feel the love all around them energetically. That's why they're so, sometimes you even look at them and it's like they're glowing. They have a glow to them. Um, Ten of pentacles, six of pentacles. This is a woman who is going to be very wealthy spiritually. And what do I mean by that? She will always be comfortable. 
Money will never be a problem. She'll always have, Ten of Pentacles is here. She'll always have a roof on top of her head. She'll always have more than enough. And it's because people will be at her service. It could even be men who will always be willing to assist her. Six of Pentacles is giving, gifting. People will always want to do things for her, take care of her buy her things, you know, do do favors, do her favors without her even asking. She's always going to be comfortable. Her needs will always be met. Her beauty is a gift. It's power. It's power. Um and her charm is power. Um Wow, Ten of Pentacles, Six of Pentacles, Five of Pentacles. But she should also be careful. She should be careful because she is not a possession. Okay, it's kind of like Marilyn Monroe. She would say it all the time where she, there's always people around her, you know, and she had everything that she wanted. She had a Ten of Pentacles, successful and, you know, rich and famous and of status. And, you know, men wanted her. Women wanted to be her friends and this and that. But she would say how, how she would say things like, I, how can I feel lonely when, when there are so many people around me? You know, how can you feel lonely when you have company at all times? And it's, be it's probably because these were people who found her incredible, but these are people who couldn't bond with her emotionally. I feel like she had the pentacles, but she didn't have the cup. And the cup is where the feelings and emotions and love and intimacy is she had the pentacle but she didn't have the cup that's exactly what it is so five of pentacles is the loneliness these two people are with each other yet they feel lonely can you imagine they're each other's partners, but there's coldness and distance. And then feeling like the whole weight of the world is around you, even though you have people around you. Ten of Wands, because you feel like you can't talk to them about certain things. So what she should know when finding a partner is find someone who will give her the pentacle, the security and stability but will also give her the cup, someone who she can emotionally bond with, be emotionally intimate with, and not just sexually or superficially or materialistically. And I feel like that's pretty much all. That's what's gonna help her to make up her mind with the Two of Swords. Look at these two men and look at them for their qualities their personality. Which one are you more compatible with? That will help you. Look at this, two of cups. That will help you. You won't be confused anymore. Two of swords is indecision. You won't be indecisive anymore. What do you want in a partner? What do you want in a life, in your life? What kind of life are you looking for? And then examine these two men and see if they have what it takes to give you what you want. The choice is yours. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and end the reading here. Thank you guys so very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed and resonated with the reading. And if you did, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to support the channel. I will be doing private phone call readings today and this week. So if you're interested, just check out the description box. All of the info will be there. Take care, everyone, and many, re and many blessings to you.